to start recording. All yours. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. My name is Leigh Ralston, also known as Mommy Lay on the internet. Hi, everybody. Hello, San Francisco. Where is everybody from? Hello. It's 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. San Francisco, too. Hello. Las Vegas, India. Wow, it's going fast. <laughs> California, Indiana. Hey, guys, we could all use a little break, right? Um, thank you. First of all, before I um, start the workshop, let me say thank you first for taking the time to be a part of today's workshop. Um, hello, New Jersey, Michigan. Um, it's always nice if there's a whole lot more of us <laughs> to enjoy this workshop together. Um, I was just talking to Krista from Faber Castell that um, today's workshop is going to be really fun, not just because we're going to learn a holly jolly lettering, but because I really want to go break down the lettering techniques that I've learned through the years of doing this and i am going to share all my secrets with you guys, this is going to be so much fun hello gail. Hello, so my name is Leigh and I'm a mom of three beautiful kids. Well, two of them are not really kids anymore and the youngest is 10 turning 21. <laughs> if you can relate to that, say yes. Um, but today, like what I said, I would like to thank all of you. Of course, thank uh, Northwest Hawkins, I'm here too. Uh, thank Michaels and thank Faber Castell for doing this workshop for us. I know that we could all use a little break from everything that's happening in the world, from the pandemic to um, the election here in the U.S. So I know that I could use it. Maybe some of you could too. And maybe that's why you're here. So thank you. Today is going to be all about modern brush lettering. And brush lettering has been such a big part of my life. When we were all waiting in the waiting room, I was just talking to um, the team here about, I am an artist, I am actually a singer. But after my youngest daughter was born, that is when I knew I needed an outlet. So whether you are a student, whether you're a mom, working mom, stay at home mom, or you're just a little girl boy wanting to have something creative in your life. And it's really, really important. And that's what happened to me. That is why I fell in love with lettering is because what it is is like being a kid again. If you're a kid, <laughs> you can't relate to this yet, but one day you will. And hopefully you'll remember this day when, um, when you've learned about the lettering and hopefully Still then, you'll be doing something creative because it really is important. Hello, UK, uh, Washington, Wisconsin. Um, but um, also, Krista is going to be here from Faber-Castell. She's going to say just a few words before we actually jump in to the workshop. Hello, Krista. Hello, Leigh. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. So I will actually be the chat. Um, I am not in this in the same place uh, is is lay so we're we're many, many hundreds of miles apart, but if you have questions, please post them to the chat. They won't be visible to her as she's working she'll be focusing on teaching you the lettering, but I can always break in and ask questions and get further instruction if you need that. I did already post the link to the worksheet that we'll be using tonight, um, so if you don't see that I think it's the second. Uh, chat in, in the chat function, or I can post it again. But with, with that, I will turn it over and let's get started. All right. Thank you, Krista. Like what she said, we do, um, I did prepare a worksheet for you guys. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five pages. And we're going to go through this one by one. Um, also, it would be helpful to me if you'll tell me that you're going a little too fast because I do have the tendency to go a little too fast. So just let me know. Um, and I also don't wanna drag this workshop because we're gonna learn a whole lot here, okay? So I will give you a little bit of time if you'd like to um, grab a piece of paper, if you'd like to grab some brush pens, I hope that you have your Faber-Castell with you uh, because this is what I'll be working with today. So in the, in the workshop, in this worksheet, I'm sorry, the worksheet in the first page, I talked about all about the pens because I remember when I was first starting with 
lettering and it was a little bit overwhelming to be completely honest with you because there are so many pens available but one thing that i really fell in love with are brush pens because brush pens are really a fabulous writing tool you can do so much with it it has a flexible tip and when i say brush pens this is it so it's not your regular ballpoint pen this is what it looks like so the tip of this pen is really flexible and this is how you're going to get your thin and thick line all right and faber castell the pit artist pen they come in with many different tips um, i'm not going to go through into so much detail about the other different tips but in your worksheet you'll find the different type of tips that the pit artist um have so i'll just go through real quick there's an extra small there's a small uh there's the fine the medium the soft chiseled the brush which is what we'll be working with the soft brush and then the 1.5 tip as well or i'd like to call it the bullet tip so let's go back to the brush pens brush pens are really a fabulous writing tool because it has that flexible tip that will allow you to create those thin and thick line Sometimes, although it looks like just a regular pen and it looks like really simple, like, oh, you know what, I can work with that. <laughs> but really, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. And this is where practice would come in. And you will hear this from me a lot. Practice, 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 because it is what I do until now. It's still what I'm doing. I practice every day. Yes, it does. So now. Now that we've uh, went through the pen, so this is the brush pens that we're working with. Pen position also is really important. I remember when I was first starting, I thought that I would just write just like a regular writing, you know, how you would write your name in a document, um, you would write in school, you know, for your notes. But when you're working with a brush pen, it's important to have slightly tilted. You're gonna notice my hand, and my pen as well. I don't write like this, but when I'm writing with a, with a regular pen, I would write like this. See, but when you're going to do the brush lettering, you want your hand, this part of it, if you're a right hand, if you're a lefty, the really it's the same principle would apply. You want a firm pressure, but you don't want to put so much pressure that you're putting um, strain into your hand. Art doesn't have to hurt. That's the most important thing. So you don't have, a, I can see that there's a lot of poor people here. You, look, with brush lettering, you don't need all the pens. Sometimes all you need is just one color and it is what you can use to practice with. So like what I said, firm pressure here or just a comfortable, I should say, a comfortable pressure on your hand, but it should be where you have full control. Now your top three fingers, this is where that's moving. Here you can see my hands are still, it's laying flat and still. Now my three fingers are the one that's going to control this pen. Sometimes this finger would support the three, but it's just find that comfortable position, all right? The second one that's really important is to have your pen tilted this way. Now this is one secret that maybe it's not really a secret but but one thing that is very very important because when you're writing in a brush letter you're going to use the tip and the body of your marker see the tip is when you're going to write really thin and the body is when you're going to apply pressure i'll just show you a quick sample thin and thick, right? Thin and thick. See how I applied pressure when I was going down? We're going to learn that in a little bit. Now, the Pit Artist pens are really great because these are India ink. These are, it dries really fast. If you're a lefty, you will love these markers because they will dry fast and I know I've heard a lot from my students before that when they're lefty they're smudging basically you know because they're writing from here to here so that most of the time they would end up smudging and smearing what they're working with so the India ink that's you will love this one all right 
So here in the workshop, I did provide the different strokes. And these are really important, okay? Um, if you're a beginner, or even if you're like, you've already have your markers and pens, please don't be like me because when I was first beginning and I was first starting, I skipped a whole lot of the strokes. And little did I know is that these are the most important strokes. Oh, no, the, the worksheets are provided there. Krista will be able to post the link to it. You can download this one so you can always print it at home. You can print as many as many as you'd like, as you know, if you need it. Okay, so it's a printable. You can just print it at home and then work with your worksheets. Yeah, I think that the what was posted on the workshop page was the Holly Jolly lettering. So I think it's it's missing these modern brush lettering pages, but we'll get okay. these get these out. I have the file. You have the file. Okay, wonderful. All right, Krista will upload all these worksheets for you guys. All right, so. These are the basic strokes. And again, it's very important. We'll talk about the upstroke. And you've seen me, I was doing the thin line. So that would be your upstroke. When you hear the upstroke, this is applied with a very, very light pressure, okay? Upstroke, and you're going to see that it has arrow so that it will show you that you have to go really, really light upstroke, thin pressure, thin lines, and really light pressure. Sometimes I mix my words, guys. So upstrokes, thin lines, and very light pressure. Now, as you can, as you will notice here, I'm just using the tip of the marker. I'm gonna go real close here. So just the tip, we're working with just the tip. So that's her upstroke. Now the downstroke, this is applied with medium to heavy pressure. Now it's going to depend on how thick you want your lines to be. So you want down, you can go as just thick as that, or you can go, see? I did that with just applying more pressure. So we can go this thick or we can go that thick. And again, look at the position of my pen, right? So I am like um, an angled at 45 degree angled here and my paper too is tilted to the side. Now I have that. So that is your downstroke. Now the overturn, this is where you're gonna practice the thin and the thick together. So if you've practiced your thin and thick, the next stroke will be the, the um, overturn. So we are gonna go, think of it as a letter U, but backwards. So thin, light pressure, down, heavy pressure. All right, let's do that again. Thin, and then thick. So every time you go up, think light as a feather, and then when you go down, you apply medium to heavy pressure. Okay, now it's the underturn, which is now the letter U. So this time it is the opposite. So if we started with the light going up, we ended with the heavy. This time we're going to go heavy and then light. And so as the, the more you do this, the more you're going to build a muscle memory. And that is why practice is really important because when you're first going to start with lettering, you have to think it in your mind. I'm going down. I'm applying heavy pressure. I'm going up. I have to go light. And there's nothing wrong with that if you have to keep saying it over, over, over and over in your mind because if that's what helps you, then you just do that. Okay, so let's do our under turn. So this time, heavy pressure to light pressure. Heavy to light. And it's going, it's a, it's a personal thing. Sometimes I find it difficult to do the heavy to light first, then the light to heavy. Because I feel like I really have heavy hands, so it comes natural to me applying the pressure. So going light is when I'm having difficulties with. You're very welcome, Amanda. All right, so let's do heavy to light. Heavy 
to light. See, it gets thicker and thicker because up until now, it doesn't matter. I still sometimes <laughs> having trouble with my light. And I think doing the light strokes will be difficult for someone like me that have heavy hands. So just practice, it, it's, it's okay. All right, so now we're going to learn the compound curve. Now, the compound curve is kind of like a letter N. So this time we're going to go light and then heavy and then light again. So see, we're just connecting all these strokes together. So ooh, light, heavy, and then you if you need to pause, just pause like that. It's okay and then go light again, okay? So when you're practicing, if you're a beginner, if you have to pause a little bit like this, that's fine. Just pick it up where you left off and then go continue your strokes. So don't give yourself a hard time if you can't get it the first time because no one starts as an expert. Okay, so next is the combination. This looks like a, you know, a small capital I in script. So this one will be fun to do because I'm going to show you later the basic strokes. Aside from this, we're going to learn how to connect all these and how these strokes will give you the letters. That's why it's really important to practice this. So let's start with the um, com combination. So light, go up, heavy pressure, and then just go really light again. Whew. Light, oops, light, heavy, pause there. Oops, I did the other one. Okay, light, heavy, and then light. There we go, so that's a combination. Next one is the oval. This is just the letter O. Heavy and then go light. See how I started with kind of like building a letter C first and then connect it. Here we go, let's do that again. Think of it as you're doing a letter C, but you're going to connect it. So that's a letter O, right? So again, let's just do a little recap. So that is your upstroke, upstroke again, is done with applying little pressure. And this is when you're going up, up stroke. So really, really light. Next is your downstroke. Downstroke is heavy, applied with a heavy pressure, medium to heavy pressure. Depends on how much um, thick you want your lines to be. And this is when you're going to use the body of your brush tip, All right? So the upstroke, you use the tip of the brush and then the meat and then the downstroke. Basically you're using pretty much the hole, but you're applying and bending it. And that's one thing I wanna add is when you're doing your downstroke, I know that it's sometimes scary that you don't wanna bend your pen, but trust me, these pens were built for that. You're supposed to bend it so that you can get those thick and thick and heavy, I mean, thick strokes, okay? So don't be scared. I know it. I get scared sometimes too, but I wanna just add this quickly. With the Pit Artist pens, these brush pens are really sensitive. So one thing to remember, paper is really important when you're practicing. Now, um, I want to share this with everyone that's here today, my favorite paper to use when I'm practicing. So before we move on, let's talk about the paper because this is really important as well. So I'm using an HP. This is just a plain copy paper, but this copy paper is really so super smooth. And that's why you're not going to hurt your pen so much. So this is the HP Premium 32. Okay, this is really good paper to practice on. That's not gonna break the bank. And then when you're ready 
to start working with, you know, a much better pieces. You feel like, okay, I'm good with my strokes. I'm ready to do my letters. Um, the papers that I love to use are Bristol. I love using that because it's really good for markers. The surface is really smooth. It's not going to hurt your brush pens. And also, I really love working with tracing paper because these are also really smooth. The surface is super smooth so that your brush pens will just glide. See this one? So your markers will glide and you'll find it easier to connect your strokes when you're working with the very smooth paper. Um, because I, I, I think when I was first starting, I was just using a regular copy paper and that was very frustrating. You know, when you're beginning and when you're starting to learn something, you know, it's it's really important to find what is wrong here? Why am I not being able to do all these beautiful letterings that I see online? So a tracing paper is really good for this. That HP Premium 32 is really good. And some Bristol papers are great for markers as well. All right. So now that we've talked about pens, we've talked about the types of paper, and we did our basic strokes. We are going to, all, oh, by the way, I also included this. So you have your practice sheet. So you can work on your basic strokes here. All right. So this is going to be a part of that worksheet. All right. So these are the drills and warm ups. You're very welcome. So the letters are formed by a combination of two or more of these basic strokes. And when I was first learning all these, I thought I'm like, oh, those are super cool. You know, because like what we did with the letter O or the oval stroke, we started with the letter C. And then, you know, we, I can do the joy to the world later in live so you guys can see that. So I, we started with the letter C and then we connected those strokes and then we created the letter O or the oval, right? So these drills and warmups, these are the basic strokes that you will see here. If we connect this stroke, basically it is our thin stroke. And then we're gonna create our oval here. And then we have our downstroke, kind of like a combination. We created the letter A. See, that's why it's really important to not skip your strokes. All right, so this one, we created the oval. And then if we're gonna do thick stroke, that and that will create the letter D. There we go. One thing that's really important also that I'd like to add here is that when you are lettering, think of it as you are drawing the letters. Because sometimes when we think of it as, oh my gosh, my handwriting is just, there's no hope. I don't write neat, I, I can't do all those. So think of it as you are really drawing the letters here. Because if I am, if I am to write just a regular a, B, C, D, then I will just, you know, B, C, D, E. I mean, come on, let's be honest. When I'm writing fast, then it's, it's going to look like this. But if I want to take my time and really letter, then A, B, C, C, C that. So basically think of it as you're drawing. So be in that moment. Don't be in a rush. Don't get frustrated because in the beginning, it is understandable that I cannot get this lines straight. And it's okay because all my letters too, when I was first beginning, it's shaky, especially when I was doing the light stroke, because like what I said, I have heavy pressure. So the natural for me is a downstroke. And I I was nailing that in the beginning, but for the thin strokes or the upstrokes, Man, those are difficult. And until now, I still find it a little difficult to do those if I don't practice every day. So if you find that your, I don't want to say weakness is the, you know, the upstroke, then I say 
keep working on that because that's the most important thing of all is if you practice because no matter how many <laughs> workshops you attend whether it's free or a paid workshop if you don't practice if you really don't devote your time you know 10 to 15 minutes you know really every day in practice you will see the improvement and one thing that i want to add is that your practice sheets, it's important to really keep them because one thing that I've learned through the years is that if I don't have a reference, you don't see the progress. And that's when it gets a little frustrating is that it's like, I'm not even, I'm not even improving. See, without the reference of when you started and how it is now, what it looks now, you don't know if you're improving, of course, you're going to know, but seeing it really helps a lot. And that's what, what's to me is very important to me. If I have a reference that, oh my gosh, look at how I was doing my letter G before and look how I'm moving my letter G now, you know, so seeing that reference, so keep your practice sheets. I'm not saying hoard them, but you know, keep few of them so you can have that reference. All right. So it's really important. Okay. So I know that some of you are requesting for that joy to the world. We're going to go work on that. And also the Holly Jolly, because this is the fun part of this is because hand lettering is really something that you can do as just a hobby. You can actually turn it into a small business, you know, you want to create something or you can just want to create something for your loved ones. And this is my favorite part is creating something for my friends, my families and all that. So now is a perfect time to learn hand lettering so you can write those beautiful, gorgeous cards and everybody will like, oh, where'd you get that? I wrote it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to learn today. And also with that worksheet, um, I'm I truly apologize if some of you are having a little bit of um, trouble with the worksheet. Don't worry, we will figure this out. We'll have the worksheet in there. Um, you will be able to save this and print this at home. So with the worksheet, we also provided you some sample letters so that you can work on this at home. So you'll have that reference and that you can just keep, if you wanna just keep printing this page so that you can start working your letters in here, that will be great too. But I wanna do this lettering in real time just the letters before we start before we jump in doing the holiday pieces okay so let's start with the letter a so you guys can see okay now um some of you will think that when you're doing your lettering and you go online, you go on Pinterest, you go on Instagram, you go on YouTube, you know, all over social media, there are a lot of people that are posting their art. Now, I, I know that I'm pausing and I keep talking, but this is really also important because I don't want you to feel frustrated and I don't want you to give up right away, you know? So when you're first starting, use them as an inspiration, okay? It's really important because these artists, put in a whole lot of time to really practice their lettering. And I want you to get that inspiration so that you will really spend some time every day to practice your letters so that one day we also will be looking at your lettering pieces online, okay? So, all right, so this is a letter A. One thing that I wanna add is that when you're looking at things online, <laughs> you're going to see many different styles of lettering. Um, you may think that, oh, they all look the same, but really they're not. They, they have this uniqueness about them. My, oh, thank you. So my lettering would be different from other artists, and that is okay. And to be completely honest with you, my goodness, before I found my style, it, it was a little bit <laughs> frustrating because I would compare my work to others. And, and I think that's just a normal thing, you know, comparing your work to others. But then the, the moment that I stopped that, the moment that I really worked on my style, I used them as an inspiration. How can I do this letter? Um, different than theirs, but my own style as well. And that's when you're going to get that 
unique style of yours. So just keep faking it until you make it. It's okay. Copy it, you know, as long as you're not selling it, <laughs> if you're copying something. So just use it as inspiration. Okay. You can copy my letters like this, use it as an inspiration. Go from here. You can trace the letters like that. That's fine as well because that's normal. Okay. So that's my letter B with the letter C. Letter D. We can just do a basic like this, like the oval. You can do like a letter L. See how I did that? That's just an oval and a letter L. Letter E. Letter F, again, an oval, downstroke, thin. Letter H, thin stroke, heavy stroke, going up, upstroke, thin, going down, heavy, going thin again. So every time you go up, thin, thin, thin. And then when you go down, thick. Letter I. Letter J. See, it kind of looks like the L too, right? But then we're gonna add this. So it's kind of just doing the same strokes over and over. So when you're beginning, when you're a beginner or in, you know, in the first stage of your journey in the lettering, don't get frustrated when you can't get the loops and all the swashes and all that, because trust me, when I was just beginning, I would just, just to get the thin and the thick stroke was a challenge enough. So don't get frustrated, okay? So JKL, there we go. Letter M, thick, thin, and thick. Letter M is really a good letter to practice because as you can see, I did the thin, thick, thin, thick, and then thin and thick again. See the letter M? So maybe you wanna consider choosing that one. And then letter N. There we go. Yes, ma'am. Now the oval. You want to be fancy, just add a little bit of that. The paper that I'm using is the HP Premium 32 paper. Now the letter P. I can do this. Yes, I am on Instagram. It's Mommy Lay. So you can do P like that, you can do P like that. So when you're practicing, when you're already used to your thin and thick, then you can start playing with your letters. Now letter Q, O, P, Q. <laughs> I don't know my alphabet. So Q, <laughs> R, S, T, S, that thin strokes. <laughs> S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and then letter Z. There we go. As you can see, guys, right, my, my paper was really tilted to the side, and it really helps so that your brush pen will glide much better than that, like that. So my paper, tilt, firm, so you have control. 
hold your pen like this. Don't. Now, I can't really, because when I'm teaching, I want to say that this is your three main control. But everyone holds their pen differently. You know, some hold it this way. As long as you have enough control, then you hold it however you would like it. As long as your brush is tilted like this to the paper. Not like this. Like this, all right? Because this is going to make your strokes much better. The brush pen will glide. So again, not like this, tilted. See how I have control over here? So, and sometimes I would hold it this way so I have enough grip. See, and now this one is like, my brush pen is really standing or resting comfortably in my ring finger. And then I can just give enough pressure when I need it, all right? Okay, so we talked about pens, we talked about papers, we've learned about the strokes. Now it's going to be the fun part. We're going to learn a piece. I did the holly jolly. That's going to be a part of that work worksheet. Yes, it is really important because trust me, when I was first starting, um, I didn't realize that those things are really important. And that's why it's worksheets, workshops like this is so important. So thank you, Michaels, you know, for having these workshops. And of course, thank you, Faber-Castell for um, having this workshop available for everyone. Okay, so we are going to do the Holly Jolly. This is the worksheet. All right, so you can trace over the image over here if you're starting and you just want to feel comfortable where I did the pressure, where, the, where I did the downstroke and where I went lighter. So when you have a reference like this or a worksheet like this where you can just follow along, I think it's really helpful. And that's okay. Well, how am I going to learn if I just keep tracing? You know what? To be honest with you, the more you practice like that, the more muscle memory you're going to build. So it's okay if you just want to keep you know, um, tracing over that because you're going to see where, oh, she went light on that one because it's a thin stroke, you know, so in your mind, you know when to go light. So the more you do it over and over, muscle memory, you got this. Okay, so I just added a little bit of reminder because that's what I have in my head every single time. <laughs> Remember, downstroke, pressure, upstroke, light pressure. Downstroke, apply pressure. <laughs> Upstroke, apply pressure. Okay. So, and also, I included some um, arrows. I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up, but you're going to see that in your worksheet. <laughs> yes, it's okay, Jean. That's fine because I think the beauty of lettering is that I, I think it is really feeding my inner child. I feel like when I am just here in my happy place and when I am lettering, this is when I'm such in the moment. And that's when I find like, it's, it's almost very, um, it's almost like meditating because you're just focused into one thing. You're not thinking about stress. You're not thinking about anything, but you're just thinking about your thin <laughs> and your thick strokes. So down strokes and up strokes. Okay, so here in the worksheet, you're gonna find in the Holly Jolly, I um, added some, some arrows. So this is where you're gonna see, I started with this. I went really downstroke, so heavy pressure, right? So I'm going to go thin, I'm going to go up. So going up, which is upstroke, so thin, and then heavy pressure again. So I think those arrows will help you a lot. And also to be able to um, trace over this image will really help too. Okay, so now we're going to do it live. This time I'm going to use the tracing paper. Maybe I should put it on top of a white paper so we can see better. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so we're gonna do the holly jolly. I'm gonna share with you a little trick also. So if you're gonna do this and you're gonna send it to your friends as a card, you know, as a holiday card, the great thing about the Pitt Artist Pens is these are um, India ink. India ink will last you up to 25 years. Is that true, Krista? But it will last you a very long time. That means it will not fade, you know, over time. 
But that's why it's really good when you're working on a masterpiece, which is what you're going to do after this workshop, right? So you're going to work on a masterpiece. So we're going to do the holly jolly. I know I tend to talk a lot. Here we go. Where did I throw that? Okay. So we start with the letter H. Whew, pressure. Here we go. Did you see how I, what I did in there? I did a pause. You know what, I'm going to change my pen because this is really light. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> thank you. I was just thinking that, that I should change my pen. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go trace over this one. The color might be a little different. Now, when I'm working with a bigger letter, I tend to pause a lot in between my strokes and that's okay. Is this better? I think this is too big. I, even me, I'm struggling here. <laughs> so we have the holly. We have the jolly, same. Only difference is the H and the J, right? So we have holly, jolly. I am going to grab this green here is number one, six, seven. So the green olive. Now we're going to use and we're gonna add some mistletoe. So we can all do circles, right? So we're just gonna add three. <laughs> three. This one. Super cute. Let us repeat the same process. We're gonna do three circles in here. This is like being a kid again, right? We're making, we're learning the alphabet and then we're making circles. Look at that. And now I'm gonna show you a really fun trick. If you have a piece of packaging somewhere like this, here we go. This is just the plain plastic I have here. And I'm gonna use the darker color. Now these um, India inks are blendable as long as they're still wet, but once they dry, they are permanent, okay? So I just did the dark color. And so now I'm using the lighter green color and I'm just picking up those colors. So we're gonna do here. Think of it as when you were young, you're making a grass like that. So with that trick that I did, I kind of created an ombre. See this, I'm gonna do it again. And we're gonna draw some letters so you can see, because it's still wet. See the gradient? How pretty is that? Now let's, and now it's going back to the original light green color, see? Super fun. So you started with the letter dark because you're creating that ombre or the gradient look. So it's always fun to do that trick. Okay, now let's keep adding some leaves. And I'm gonna go on this side. I'm just gonna add it here. See, I just created a grass, another one, and then now a longer one like that. And we're gonna repeat the same process on the right side. Grass, and another one here, all right? Now we're just gonna fill in the color. Here we go. Super fun. And then here, 
I'll do this here. Okay, watch me draw a leaf again. So you go from here to there, like a small tip triangle. Here to there. Now we're going to bring this to the middle, like that. Like that again. Repeat the same process. Let's meet in the middle. Now fill in the colors. Here we go. Yay! Now we're going to repeat the same process. If some of you guys are following me already on Instagram and all over my social media, some of you may be familiar with my style of illustration and letterings. I love the kawaii style, which is cute, means cute in Japanese. And so what I like to do, <laughs> this is of course, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do with my illustration is I really like to add cute faces in them. And we're going to do it here. So we're just going to add two eyes. So simple circle. And then just add the smiley face over there. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to do this style. And then we're going to add some lashes. Just two pieces of lashes and a very cute small mouth. <laughs> and then this one's like, you know what, whatever you guys. Side eye, that would be my teenager daughter. <laughs> so I have three kids. This one is my son, just calm, you know, he's okay. <laughs> and then this one is my youngest. She is just full of energy. She's happy, happy, happy. And that's my oldest, 19 year old. <laughs> I'm just joking, but I just want to make it fun. So let's do the same thing here. Let's just add those cute faces. This time, remember at the beginning, I was talking about many different types of tips that the pit artist pen comes in. So this one is the fine. So that is why I'm able to create these tiny lines. This one would be me. Just calm and send. Same face. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> the tip of the J. So is that the, this one, the jolly? Let's do that again. It's okay. This is what I'm here for. So that I can teach you guys. So the letter J. I kind of did a little scoop in here. So from here, and then added just pressure. See? And then another third loop. If you have to stop in here, it's okay, like that. You can also, of course, just plain J, just a downstroke, add your loop, and that's it. See? Or you can make a, a capital J, like that. Add your letter O, this one. And then your Y. Here we go. Now, the fun part is if you are going to start working on your um, cards, Michaels I actually went to Michaels yesterday and I did a little bit of shopping. So this is a top loading card. Okay. And we're going to go work on a piece in here because I want you to get inspired and I want you to buy your markers and work on your hand lettered, you know, card this holiday season because there is nothing better than a happy mail. Okay, lots of markers is better. <laughs> I'm just joking. So this one in the worksheet, there's also I created this one as well. So aside from the holly jolly, you will also get this one. So again, I added those for reminders, downstroke, apply pressure, upstroke, apply pressure. So you can again, trace over this image over and over over and over practice. And then when you feel like you're comfortable and you can do it by yourself, then you can start working on a piece of paper first or a tracing paper or a um, Bristol paper, a vellum paper. Uh, the, these are the smooth paper that you can work with. And then you can jump right in into your card. All right, so winter wonderland, let's do that. That's gonna be fun. So I hope that this is not gonna be too light. So maybe I should use 
a little bit darker one. All right, winter wonderland. Okay, again, tilt your paper to the side. If you're a lefty, then tip, tip it to this other side, okay? So I'm gonna go to my left here. So this one is sky blue 146. Here we go. Whew. Pressure. Stop in there. Now I tend to write really big and that's when I struggle with my letters and keeping them fitting in the page that I'm working on. So now with your letter T, you can just keep it simple or make it fancy, as fancy as you'd like. Now I made it to, hmm, there's not enough wiggle room or not enough breathing room for my letters. So I'm going to struggle with this swash because I don't want it to go over the letter R, but I might have to. So do that. So winter, to be honest with you, I'm really close to the top. And see, I am so far off to the right. And see, it happens. Even to us that's been doing this for years, it still happens. So guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is I'm going to grab another card. And I promise I'm going to be better on this one. And it's also hard because I have this mic in front of me. And then my, my camera is right in front of me. So, it's, so sometimes it's like, okay, where is that middle part? So just try your hardest to really find that middle. Okay, I'm just eyeballing things here, guys. Be patient with me. Okay. So the letter W you can go back in and just do that. I like to do that too. Okay. Hopefully I'll be better in this one. E. And then our letter R. Okay, I think this is better. And then, all right, much better, Lay. So this time I want to use a different shade of blue. Okay, so we're going to use this 110. Hope it's not super blue. It's okay. So I'll do the same thing. E, my thin stroke, winter, wonder. Now, after this workshop, all these is going to get stuck in your head. Walking in the winter wonderland. <laughs> winter, wonder, and I'll use a different shade of blue again. This one is two, four, seven. I think I'm going to do a capital L on this one. Okay. There we go. There. Was my camera struggling? Sorry about that. Okay. Now we're going to get metallic shade in silver. Here we go. And we're just going to add snow. So think of it as a letter X. Hat. So we're creating asterisk. Here we go. But these are snows. In the matter we can build a snowman. Put some glitter, yes, that's a good idea. You can do that too. You can add some sequence to it. You can put it some glitter. You can add watercolor in the background because these India inks, this is not going to react with water. So you're not gonna ruin your piece if you'd like to add a little bit of watercolor. If you'd like to do some little bit of mixed media, you can add some gesso. There's a lot of options. 
So there's so much that you can really do. Oil paste, act, yes. Acrylics, uh, I don't know. Maybe you should start with that first. We should do a gesso class because I've just been playing with some gesso and it's really, really fun. And I was just adding some small dots. Okay, so just to add those, like the falling snow here. And then inside, once you have that, okay, it's another top loading card. You can add 2020 in here. Inside, you can add in your message. See how simple that was? Guys, you created a card this holiday. This is super cute. You can add a little snowman in here. Maybe I should add a little snowman. I know I'm going to mess it up if I do that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue. These pit artist pens are available in so many colors. And again, in many different tips as well. Here we go. I hope that after this workshop, you'll be inspired to create something. Oh, and um, I hope that you won't get frustrated in the beginning if you're struggling with thin strokes or thick strokes. Remember that no one starts as an expert, all right? Um, I really, really do appreciate you guys. Um, if after this workshop you still have any questions, um, you can come back and watch, and watch this again because this is being recorded, um, or you can always reach out to me in social media. It's at Mommy Lay, so that's L-H-E-Y. And I'm, I'm super grateful that you are here. Thank you so much for joining this workshop. Again, thank you, Michaels, for providing workshops like this for free. It's always fun to infuse creativity into our everyday lives. It's super important to me. And I try to do the same with my children. They see me doing it. If you're a mom, if you're a dad, and your children are seeing that, that you're doing something for yourself, something fun, even as simple as lettering. It's truly a super important. Thank you, Michaels. Thank you, Faber-Castell for doing this workshop and for having me here today. I hope that um, you were inspired. I hope that you'll try to do some holiday pieces this holiday season. So create your own cards, tags, and all that. Um, and I hope that you continue to learn and stay creative and always stay happy. You guys take care of yourselves and we'll see you sometime again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Leigh. This was great. Thank you, everyone.